Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the 26th Pi Games tutorial video. Just gonna pick off where we uh, pick up where we left off. Um, just writing the, these crossover statements here. So, uh, we, what we did first with the X was we wrote it, and then we added an or to combine since it really is an either or statement. Um, but you can also write that with an if elif statement as well. So that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna write an elif now. So for the other side of the the y crossover. So now with this elif, we could we would say l if lead y plus block size. Actually, I think it's block underscore size plus block size is greater than rand apple y and lead y plus block underscore size. Um, is less than rand apple y plus apple thickness. Okay, so a little bit off the screen there, but that's okay. Then, if that is all the case, uh, we'll do the same thing we did before, and that is print x and y crossover. And then we uh, move this over so that makes a little more sense. And let me just uh, iterate why we wrote everything we wrote in the cell if statement. So we're asking here if lead y plus block size. So let's go over to our lovely paint here. And we're asking the following question. If lead y plus block size, so that's on this side of the box. So if lead y plus block size, so over here, is between... Um, is greater than rand apple y, which is here, is greater than this, and then and lead y plus block size is less than rand apple y plus apple thickness. So this is here, greater than over here, but less than over here. That's what we're asking. So that was the other side, and or basically y. And um, get me over, thank you. So we've asked both these questions, and now we're assessing whether or not we have X and Y crossover. So let's go ahead and run that and see where we stand. So there's our snake. There's our apple. Oops. <laughs> okay, let's play again. play again. All right, so no crossover. That's good. Just barely crossover. Got it. Let's go over here. Crossover. Got it. How about over here? Crossover. Good, good, good. I can't really see if it's pasting out anything more. Yeah, it definitely is. It finally moved up the window. I wasn't really sure. So now what we're going to do is fix this to not be just uh, you know pasting crossover. Instead, what we want to do is we actually want it to output uh, the Apple resetting function, which is right here. So we commented it out. Um, and let me make sure this contains the uh, commented out tens. Yes. So now we just copy this and paste it, basically. So copy, and then we'll paste it right here. Um, uncomment, uncomment, and then paste it right here. Uncomment, uncomment, space that, that was sloppy. And then we'll delete this print statement here. And I'm just going to delete this one as well. Okay, let's save and run that. And let's just uh, check it, make sure our code is right. So we'll play our game for a minute here and just make sure that I'm not really sure how I got away with that reversal. I'm pretty sure I should have died there. Um, so, so far everything seems to be, uh, 30 frames per second is definitely a little too fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, so I think we're fairly confident at this point um, that uh, that code is good. So, um, so we'll just leave it at that, I think. So now at this point, We've covered a lot of like object interaction, basically, or object collision, or whatever you want to do when two objects come together. So we've got basically all the combinations that are possible that I can kind of think of out of my head. Um, so so you can make all kinds of things collide and have handling for them, to, depending on where it is. I like the idea though of making it as efficient as possible. So if your snake or if your two objects that are colliding can be the exact same size, why not make them the same size? Or if the object is always smaller and you can always make sure they come into each other like 
Um, like we could with our snake and our apple if we kept everything on like a grid basically of tens. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So why not do that? So if you can do that, that's great. But for most games, you're not going to be able to get away with doing that. So it's really important to understand writing logic like this. And again, in this case, we showed two different forms of writing logic. Either you can ask if this is the, this whole thing is a case or this is the case, do something. Or you can use if and elif statements. It really isn't, it doesn't matter that, that much in the end. Um, but, and if the first statement is correct, it wouldn't even run the or anyways. So uh, it doesn't matter. It comes down to preference, really. A lot of people don't like to write really long lines. That's understandable. So now that we've got this far in our game, what else can we do with our game? Well, first of all, I'm not really content finishing Snake and leaving Snake until we've actually fully completed the game. So what's wrong with our game still? Well, first of all, our Snake is ugly as heck. Um, our Apple is ugly as heck. Very boring. And our text is ugly as heck and very poorly centered. So we know we have to fix that. Um, also, it'd be nice to have some sort of score. It's a little hard to count how many segments are in your snake. So some sort of scoring functionality we definitely want to have. And then maybe like a really basic menu at the beginning that's going to be a lot like our quit screen where you just say, you know, play with C or Q or whatever. So that's what we have in store now. The other thing too, um, how to, we're going to be talking about how to change this little icon up here as well. And then we'll actually get to distributing Snake. Lots of stuff to look forward to. Thanks for watching on this video. And in the next video, um, probably do uh, changing the looks of the snake. But we'll see. So anyway, stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.